Hey everyone, hope everyone's doing well. It's a Wednesday afternoon, it's about 3.45 and I've got an hour, hour and a half before I have to pick the kiddies up. And I've just come to a dam which is sort of on the way home from where I work. And I usually come here to do some macro stuff and it was bright sunshine five minutes ago, it's just started raining but I don't think it will last. So anyway, it's super, super hot, but I'm going to change my clothes from my work stuff and just see if I can get out, see if I can get anything target species, I don't know, praying mantis maybe, emerald green tree lizard would be nice, what else, cicadas, anything really, just going to get out and see if I can get some photos. Right, let's go. Right, I haven't seen anything that I expected, but sorry, I got rid of the green Japanese workman cap. Not only did it look ridiculous, but it was actually more hot than not wearing it. So I'm back to the usual hat, but it stopped raining, but it's so hot and humid as usual. Anyway, I'm at these small fern kind of things here. And actually there's a few giant, I think they're Japanese giant hornets. Oh, shit, there's one there. Japanese giant hornets. I've checked the name. I'm pretty certain you certainly don't want to get bitten by one. They're lethal. Anyway, they seem there's a couple of them flying around. They don't stay still for very long, so it's difficult to get a good shot. But this is where the um, teleconverter with the extender is much better than, than a macro lens. One, you're not going to get eaten. And two, you can keep your distance and they're not too bothered by you. If you get really close, they'll be off and you might get eaten. And they are landing on this, and I've just seen one. They literally land on it, and they're trying to take the caterpillars from on here, so that's what they're eating. So that's kind of cool, so see if I can get some nice shots. It's difficult to get a nice background with all this busy stuff, but yeah, we'll keep trying. So one of the reasons I've come out is in the summer I don't really feel like doing birds because they're a lot more effort to find, to wait around. It's just so hot. So I often like to do macro because with macro I can go somewhere. I know I'm going to find something without much effort, even though I'm still so hot. Literally you can get my clothes and go like that when I finish, even after an hour. With birds it's a lot more effort. And in the summer, in the heart of the summer, I don't really want to do that unless I get up early. So that was one of the reasons I wanted to come out and often this amazing dam that I come to, I'm the only person here and I've actually been here a few times this week, maybe it's the third time in the last two weeks and I've got lots of nice shots of cool things like mantises and lizards and hornet wasps and all sorts. The other reason I wanted to come out today is um, my wife kindly gave me some money. She gave me an Amazon voucher a few months ago. I can't remember why, maybe Father's Day. And I was waiting for Prime Day to spend it. And on Prime Day, there were a few things that I was interested in that were reduced. So I just went ahead and bought it. One of them is this monopod pod thing that stands on its own and can A, hold my vlogging camera, but B, even though I never use a monopod, I'm gonna be in the jungles of Thailand and Malaysia in about a few weeks, and it can get really, really dark. And even though I never use a tripod or a monopod, I just thought a very small monopod, which I can use A for vlogging, and if I'm desperate for that extra stability, of really low shutter speed shots, I thought I'll get it, and if I only use it for the vlogging, so what? It was super cheap, I think it was about, 
equipment of 50 US dollars and this is the first time I'm trying it out. So far so good, really happy with it. The other thing I got, which was also about $50, is this new camera bag, which is super small. But it fits everything I will be taking with me on my trip. Basically, I'll only be taking my walk around lens, the 12 to 40 Olympus. I'll be taking my macro lens and my 300 millimeter MIRM1. So I won't be taking much anyway, but this basically fits it all in. Lots of little pockets and things. And again, this was also super cheap, about $50. It says it's waterproof, don't know yet. First time I'm taking it out, but really happy with this. So yeah, I just thought I'd take them out, try out my new stuff, see if I can get some shots. So here's my main camera with the teleconverter and the 300 on. My 12 to 40 and my macro. That's the one I'm going to take. And then I can fit my extra stuff, my Raynox adapter, batteries, cards, flash. I've got a flash in here. All fits in easy and this thing is tiny. Right. Right, I'm going to switch over now from my telephoto to the macro lens. I was hoping there were going to be some bigger things like lizards, skinks. There are some cicadas and they're big, but there's not much. So I'm going to switch to a macro lens and switch things up. See if I can get some shots of some smaller things. So I've got the macro lens now on my OM-1. I've got this super cheap flash. I think it's about $40, $50 on Amazon. A lot of people, when they're buying gear for macro photography, they focus on getting the best, the most expensive flash. The flash, in terms of light, is almost the least important thing. The diffuser to me is way more important. How you get that nice light, because yes, the flash might light the subject, but there might be hot spots everywhere and the image might not be attractive. So diffusing that light is key. And I like sometimes trying different types of diffusers to see what works well. Um, I have this old one, which was actually made for another lens. It's a bit big for my Olympus lens, but it just goes on like that. That works quite well. But what I've been using recently, which is just super simple, is my kids were throwing this away other, the other day. And I said, what's that? And they said it was some packing for something they'd bought in Amazon. And I just hold it, because this is so light, you can handhold this. I just hold this like that. And I use that as the fuse, and it seems to be working pretty well. And you can actually just add two. Hold it very easily, pick that in your bag, you don't, it doesn't take any space or weight and that works as a really good diffuser. So yeah, just sort of try different types of diffusers to see if you can get that really nice soft light. So anyway, let's take this, let's get over there and see if I can get some shots of some smaller bugs using that diffuser. There's an... There's an American Air Force base, the biggest in the Pacific, just behind here. So despite the tranquility, me being on my own with all these uh, different animals and having a really peaceful time shooting, every five minutes you get lots of different planes flying over. Great, so I've just been taking a picture of this cicada here. They're about the size of my little finger. And um, I took a few pictures and then I sprayed them with some water. I often take a watering spray with me. And I wouldn't do it if I felt for a second it disturbs them, it doesn't. I sprayed them a couple of times, sprayed them 10 minutes ago, stayed there, sprayed them five minutes ago. He hasn't moved. It's just water, it's so hot, you're probably doing him a favor. So anyway, I sprayed him to see if I can get some more interesting shots. And actually what was great is I used my new monopod because I tried to do in-camera fo in focus stack using the flash. So I had, I think, seven shots at four differential, um, but I couldn't keep it steady because I was holding the diffuser in the other hand 
and I just couldn't keep it steady. And I thought, well, let me just try the monopod. And it's too flimsy to hold it on its own high up because it's quite high. But I put it on the monopod and then basically leaned on the camera on the monopod, did the in-camera focus stack with the flash, and it worked. Whereas when I tried to do it handheld, it kept saying stack error, stack error. So I don't know how they're going to look. We'll look on the camera later. But, you know, because I just, you know, you might say, well, why don't you just use a tripod? I don't like taking a tripod out with me. I never do it. It slows me. And even that, because it's high, a tripod's not going to be much help unless you've got a really big one, which I have do, but I never take it out. So for, you know, in a push, I think that monopod might be quite helpful. Anyway, let's say goodbye to this guy. Let's see what else we can find. Hey, I'm super wet, super tired. I was hoping to show you a bit more. I was hoping to show you a tree lizard or something, but there's not too much about. So I think I'm probably gonna call it a day. So what we might, I might do is go back to the computer and show you a few of the shots I've taken in the last week or two at this place. Um, as I said, I enjoy, always enjoy coming here. There's probably a load of better places actually, or just as good places, but it's just easy. It's on the way home, I can park. I'm near the car where I take the pictures, which is here. And you can get a nice varied amount of species. And I've taken some of my best macro shots here over the years, actually. So yeah, just a cool place to come. Not much exciting today, but yeah, let's go back to the computer. I'll show you a few of the shots I've got in the last few weeks. Thanks so much. Okay, back at the computer, this is a few days later. It's about 11 o'clock Sunday night. I am exhausted, but I want to get this done. So basically, over the last couple of weeks, I've been to that dam on a number of occasions and taken a load of shots, way more than I can edit. So there's a lot of shots that I haven't even looked at or edited, but I need to get the video out. So I'll just stick with the ones that I've got now. So anyway, here are some of the shots that I took. Some of them I'm sort of poncing about with like flashes and trying different things. So again, these are just shots taken for the video. So anyway, let's just jump right in. So in the video, I mention Japanese giant hornets. And here's a couple of shots. As you can see, they're cool looking. Certainly wouldn't want to mess with them. But here's a shot of, of it eating a caterpillar on a small piece of grass or something or a part of a, f a fern and then here it is eating a part of the caterpillar on a rock as you can see very cool looking don't touch it down here though right and then I mentioned that I used my monopod to do an in-camera stack and I don't know how much it helped but it just gave me a bit of added extra stability and I sprayed this and just look at all that detail um, so it didn't give me, you know, obviously it's not completely stable. So this is still in effect handheld, just a little bit of stability added by that monopod. But it is very thin at the top, so it's not super stable. But yeah, loads of detail here. Kind of cool, you know, just, if you, you know, not bad. Anyway, right here is... Um, a tree lizard this was taken in the day I got a lot of pictures just regular exposure which I haven't bothered editing some of them are quite nice but this one I really ch changed the um, settings to make it look like it was taken at night and actually let me check that so that was f11 1250 ISO 500 it's obviously quite dark at that point with flash let me just look at the settings for the first three so that first Hornet was 6.3, 640 on the 300 millimeter um, with the teleconverter. This was just the 300 millimeter bare lens, 1000 f4 ISO 500, and that was f8, 125th of a second ISO 640. I think that was seven shots in the stack. Anyway, yeah, back to the lizard. Um, yeah, so I wanted to make, give it an impression of a night shot but it was actually taken during the day cool scales right here um is 
a cool dragonfly that I did a video of a couple of months ago but I saw um, a couple in this field again at the dam so this is um, what is it f5.6 500 f500 ISO 5 I can't even talk 500 the second ISO 500 here's just me m messing about with a fly that's f8 100 ISO 500 with flash here's that dragonfly flying that's 2500 for a second f4 ISO 800 here's another dragonfly close up um, the background wasn't great so I kind of zoomed in to see if I could get details on the head that's 400 f8 using the Olympus macro 60 millimeter 2.8 and that shot as long as well as the cicada and this one here were taken with the macro lens and the fly here's also the macro lens it's just a slightly different version of a praying mantis looking up into the sky I want to do black and white but keep the green of the mantis that's 640 f9 ISO 640 and then here is the pre another praying mantis regular exposure 500 f8 ISO 500 using the macro 60 millimeter there was a few I took a few birds not many here's a zitting sister cola with a caterpillar that's 1600 second f4 ISO 640 with the 300 there was a Japanese paradise flycatcher way in the woods it was really difficult to see so I quickly switched lenses and got this one shot of a male paradise flycatcher that's f4 320 ISO 200 here's another mantis um, just wiping its head look at those spikes like razors 200 of a second f8 ISO 640 here's just a regular single shot I think it was of a cicada after I sprayed it kind of cool reflection or whatever it's called diffraction or whatever that is in the eyes look at that detail that's again with the 60 millimeter macro this was one of those spiders that has a face as its body I kind of just darkened the background and used flash that was 200 f8 ISO 500 and then again me being a bit arty with this fly um, not a great picture but I was just playing around with flash and that was f9 100 for second ISO 500 just uh, so you can have another look at them I will now put them up as a bit of a slideshow with some music thanks so much for watching as always if you're new here please give a subscribe I'm about to fall over so I'm gonna hop into bed take care guys see you on the next one bye